Law School is the first law school in the United States. And it's part of William & Mary, one of the oldest universities in the country. I was selected as the first black dean of this law school, and they've never had an African-American serve as a dean of any of the schools at this university. I was raised by my father and my, my grandfather uh, to put excellence first, and it's about doing your best. So when I accomplish things, the focus that I want there to be, that this was an accomplishment based on merit. It's a sign of progress. When you have instances like myself and others who are breaking through barriers, that gives people hope that there has been change. We're a country where a significant part of our population is descendants of formerly enslaved people, including myself. That's part of my legacy. William & Mary was started in Williamsburg, which was founded in, in slavery, not too far from Jamestown, where the first slaves uh, came to the United States. You have this university that had slave labor, they would have never contemplated to have one of the descendants of these slaves become a leader of this institution. That's always been a tension for me. We have an institution like William and Mary selecting a, a black dean for the first time alongside a situation where you have numerous members of the black community suffering in many ways. We've come so far but we have so far to go. They've definitely been a lot of highs and lows in 2020. It's been uh, the rockiest year I know I've lived in. It's heart-wrenching sometimes as a black parent having to explain how can this be? I listened to my grandfather tell me the stories of what he went through, or the, my father or my mother. Both of them grew up in segregation and they had to deal with indignities and disrespect that I just, I just couldn't imagine. You can't deny that there's been progress. So I always like to start with, there has been great progress. My grandfather was a first in his field, being a first African-American professor at Notre Dame. My father was the first African-American federal judge in the state of Virginia. And both of those things were achieved through their merit and uh, their hard work. And I've done the same thing. Benjamin is absolutely the epitome of his ancestors' dreams. He's the perfect person for this position. And then he's a black man. He's excellent at, at, at everything he does. He's not gonna do anything halfway, pretty good, his best. He's gonna do the best. We say it all the time to the kids. You do your best. We expect excellence because you come from excellence you, you owe it to your ancestors? I have a long legacy of Army service. I'm a fourth generation person who has served in the Army. My great-grandfather was in the Army during World War I. His son, my grandfather, was in the Army and fought in World War II. Then my father, he was in the Army and he was in the JAG Corps. This commitment to selfless service is how I was raised and the examples that I had around me. For the Army Reserve, I work for the Government Appellate Division as an appellate attorney. I represent the Army in criminal appeals. The motto of the JAG Corps is soldiers first, lawyers always. What's great about the Reserve is that it augments the, the operational Army with people who are bringing experience from outside of the military and from their civilian jobs and from all walks of life. In 2015 is, is when I swore in. I was dramatically over the weight and had to spend time exercising. It took me about a year and a half, 18 months, to, to lose the weight and to get in shape. I had to go through the direct commission course the vast majority of these people were 24, 25 years old. They had just graduated from law school. And you know, this, this sounds crazy. I'm a 41-year-old man who's a tenure professor at University of Virginia. You've got all these young people running past you. You have to have that humility. And I got it from the beginning. I'm more proud of how great a father he is. 
because you know you're nine kids but they all need to be loved differently they all need to be appreciated differently my primary responsibility is to provide for my children and to give them opportunities to give them a decent place to live where they're not all nine of them in one room where they have beds where they have warmth where they have food my kids can look at my husband and see that they don't have any boundaries they don't have any glass ceilings above them i love that my children have an example right in their own home of someone who has followed the american dream model and they can do it what is the meaning of life why are we here if you're here and you're just doing things for yourself that's, that's, that's not what it's about. I don't know any other way to do it. I'm also focused on trying to improve the lives of the students that I'm here to support and the faculty members that I'm here to support as well as an administrator. Even as, as before I became a dean, as a professor, trying to make sure my students were learning and going out and getting fantastic jobs, trying to improve the legal system in a way that gave people who had their rights violated the ability to vindicate those rights through the judicial system, making sure the judicial system had rules that worked for them, trying to serve the system and make it better. Service is always going to be my lodestar. So that when someone comes back and says, you know, well, did you do your best? I, I did more than my best. I didn't just try to do it halfway or just get it done. For me, excellence is about performing whatever duty you have, better than it's ever been done. Excellence is about activating the excellence of those around you.